Hello everyone, my name's Campbell, and I'm going to be giving you a quick introduction to sheet music. Now, we've all seen sheet music before, something like this, and at first glance, it probably looks like complete gobbledygook, complete nonsense. But it really is very easy when you start to learn. This is the kind of tutorial that I would have liked to have when I was starting to read sheet music. Like anything, it will take some time to develop, to learn, and to really apply what you're learning in your playing but the effort that you put into it will be rewarded tenfold. It's going to open up a whole musical world to you. Okay, so without further ado, we'll move into the tutorial. First of all, we have the symbols for the notes and the rests. From left to right, it's a whole note, a half note, a quarter note, an eighth note, a sixteenth note, and then a dotted note. Now all that a dotted note means is you add on half the value of whatever the original note was. So a dotted note, like that half note there, would mean, when you play it, a half note with a quarter note joined together. It's the same process for rests. There's a whole rest, a half rest, a quarter rest, an eighth rest, and a sixteenth rest, any of which can be dotted to add half the rest value. Now we'll have a look at what that means in sheet music. Most sheet music is in 4-4 four, four time, which means there's four beats to each bar, which goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now, the whole note goes for four beats, so the whole note would be carried for 1, 2, 3, 4, and stop. A half note is held for half of the whole note, so it goes 1, 2, 1, 2. Quarter notes are worth half that value again, so they go 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. Now for the names of the notes. The notes in between the lines on the staff are F, A, C, and E. The notes on the lines of the staff are E, G, B, D, and F. So if we put these together, we get from the bottom line to the top line E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So there are really only eight notes to remember, because once you go through from A, B, C, D, E, F, and then to G, it restarts at A again. Now I'll be leaving a link in the description for fingering charts for an ocarina in C. Now on these charts you may see uh, sharps and flats which are like a little hash sign and something that looks like a B. Now I won't be explaining those in this video, but you can look them up in your own time and they're very easy to learn. Let's look at the range of a C ocarina. With all the holes covered except the subholes, it plays a C, and with all the holes open, it plays an F. Let's compare that to an ocarina in G. Did you hear the different sound that it made? It has a different range. Now you can either have it in a higher G or a lower G, depending on what type of song it is and what sound you like more. Certain songs will require a different range from, say, a C ocarina or a G ocarina. And then you can find an ocarina that has that range, or you can transpose it, as we'll be doing in this video. Let's see if we can put together everything we've learned in this video so far, and try and play a song. Now everybody knows Amazing Grace. Now it's alright to start off slow and check the fingering chart as you go along to see which notes you want to play. Now follow along on the sheet music as I play through Amazing Grace. Once you learn Amazing Grace on a C ocarina, you will be able to play it on any ocarina. It will just sound a little bit different. 
Here is what it sounds like played on an alto G ocarina, that is, the G lower than C. Now you probably noticed that that recording sounded a lot lower than the one in C, as it was in the alto G, but it was still Amazing Grace. Now that is called transposition. Now that you can play it in C, you can enjoy it on any ocarina that you own. And that's really the key here with learning sheet music. Whatever you learn to play, play it as much as you can and have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it really helped you. Happy playing everyone.